name is David Salazar, and I'm here representing the Swap Shop. I'm actually the accountant for the Swap Shop. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Swap Shop, it's a student-led initiative. Uh, we started from the ground up and became a wonderful organization that helps all students at the campus really express themselves through the art of fashion. Everything that we do is for the benefit of this community. There is a demand for our service, and because of that, that's how we came to fruition. I'm here to tell you that we are an organization that this campus is willing to fight for. We offer a service that is sought after. The business model that we have here is like no other around the country, and students have taken advantage of that. I know that USG funds the things that people at this campus want to see, and I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that the swap shop is something that students want on this campus. I can promise you that the gaping hole that will be left from our absence will hurt this community. I am begging you to hear our plea, even if not from us, and from the cries of the community that wants to see us. <coughs> we deserve to exist, and I hope you can come around to see us as a mission that deserves its existence. So, we're basically going to close now if something doesn't happen. The existence of the swap shop, as we know it, as a functioning thing that benefits this community, isn't going to exist anymore. Lots of people have come by and taken great pleasure from the services that we offer, and so we come here, really, to USG to cry for help. We're going to close down, and we need to do something about it relatively soon. We won't be open by the next semester if we don't do something about this now. And so I'm open to any discussion, any questions, anything that you want to know. Some of the bigger issues that we've been dealing with have been the tax issues. And um, there's this whole complication with being under the umbrella of nonprofit and all the stipulations that come with this specific tax codification of being nonprofit. I'm hoping that working with you guys, we could come to fix this issue. Um, we're a barter system, so we don't accept cash. Hopefully in the future, that would be something that we could do. But again, I think this is all going to work better through USG and the swap shop working together from here on out. I don't know what roadblocks we'll hit. I don't know what hurdles we'll have to cross. But I think this is an issue that we can tackle together. And again, it's why I come here today. Because I'm lost and confused. And I really want to see this organization survive. And I don't see it surviving in any other way other than with the help of USG. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, David. So, of course, I'll pass out contact info, but I know there's a lot of people in the audience today who are working on different issues that I think uh, have similar missions and might be interested in asking questions. So, is anybody interested in asking David while we have him here uh, any questions about the situation, anything that you're interested in, in, in putting into the conversation, anything like that? Well, so what, what kind of help are you guys looking for? Like, what specifically is So, that's the thing. At first, we thought it was just funding. We thought that, oh, hey, we just get enough money to continue to survive, then maybe we could just have it be that way. But we're coming to find that the issues run much deeper. How deep? I know that it has to do with the tax office. I know that there's specific stipulations on being a barter system and how you have to mark every item that's being traded at fair market value. You need to have like a 1099 form for every transaction that's being made. And so all these sorts of issues, I think, are going to have to be tackled with USG to see how we could survive, how to make it feasible, because I find it you know, pretty weird to fill out a form, every single student filling out a form for every single article of clothing that they're changing. So I hope it's through you through the swap shop that we could somehow together find how to move forward because to be quite honest with you i don't know i know it's the tax office but i, I don't know how deep that really runs do you have a follow-up yeah because yeah. um, i know at one point in academic affairs we've been talking about um potentially adding like a textbook component and not to like as like an addition to the swap shop but not like at, separate but together to maybe have like a way to have like students return books. I know the whole like if you need to book with the code, it doesn't work. But for like history classes or English or poli sci to then have that kind of component. Moving forward in USG and swap work, swap shop work together, would that potentially be an avenue? Absolutely, yeah. The textbooks, we even incorporated textbooks at first into the swap shop, but it was like no one was bringing in books and no one was taking them out, so we really didn't get to utilize that part, but absolutely, if it comes to fruition, if it's something that can continue to happen, then yes, I think including textbooks would be a wonderful thing. Yes? Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Swap Shop, but 
Are you open to restructuring yourself? Because right now you're a nonprofit. Would you be open to making like that kind of change? Yeah, and that's actually the other thing. We're not even a nonprofit per se. We okay. have no idea what we are, and absolutely, we'd, we'd, we'd be totally open to restructuring. In fact, we've been wanting to accept money as, as revenue to continue uh, this thing going or to not have this harder system. There's some people who come in and just want to buy clothes. They don't want to do the trading. And because of the tax department, we haven't been able to just pass that hurdle of accepting cash as one of the forms of payment. So I think it's necessary to have a restructuring of our system if we're able to move forward. Yes? Um, with what funding are you guys functioning now? Like, where does that money come from? Work. Just strictly through work. Yes. Um, so I don't know if this is a uh, solution to what. Uh, I just want to open this up, this idea. So, like, if you get rid of, like, all like, the legal stuff, right? Like, if I want to trade clothes with David. Yes. Like, we just do that because he said yeah and I said yeah. So it's like, could it be where they are a club? that could trade clothes because they agreed to, in a way. Like you could, because then you kind of take the legal aspect out of it, but also get the people who work there paid, like how other, some organizations, right? Okay, hi everyone, I'm Madeline, I'm the founder of the Soft Club, and I'm just gonna come in and kind of talk about these questions, because David knows a lot, but I kind of know a little bit more than him, because I've been going through it um, in the beginning, but, Originally, our, our idea was to become a club, but the reason why we cannot become a club is because we're p paying our employees. And in order to become a tier three organization, which allows you to pay employees, you have to become a club first. So therefore, we would have to become a club without paying our employees. So we would have to have volunteers running the store. And then from there, we would transition into a tier three organization, which can pay employees. So if we can somehow like jump that hurdle, going straight into a tier three organization, yes. But unfortunately, from what I've been told, no. And it's interesting because you know you see on Facebook Marketplace like people trading items and um, paying other people for items, and it's confusing because the IRS obviously knows that's happening. We know it's happening because Facebook has created that marketplace for everyone to utilize. But it's really frustrating when we come here. We are, we're creating this. It's already created. And then the tax office is saying, yeah, sorry, you can't do anything about that. You're violating all these tax codes. And you're gonna have shut you're gonna have to shut down because you can't be sued. So yeah. Hope that answers your question. Actually to further that question, so for example, there's there's lots of things that the university has to do very specific to tax codification. Like if I give you say we, we do a bet and I give you ten dollars, you know? You technically have to report that as income for the year and report it to the IRS. Do people do that? Probably not. You know, if it's just $10, it's cash, it's whatever, the IRS isn't gonna do anything about it. But because we are federally funded, and the tax department no, is gonna be true. very anal about all the organizations that accept money, they have to be as anal about the swap shop as they are with anything else, any other organization that runs under the university. It's not as simple as just you know giving you $10 for a bet because the IRS isn't gonna audit that one little transaction that you and I had. <laughs> yeah, so I guess I'm still a little confused. So just so everyone knows, David and I spoke about this probably, what, two weeks ago or so? Yeah, something like that. Um, and this is a different ask than the kind of the conversation we had a couple weeks ago. But just to provide a little bit of context, we also operate under the university. And we have the exact same, in fact, very often stricter requirements under tax codes and state accounting policies than other sections of the university do. So, you know, this idea, I'm not, I'm not really sure what the idea is, but if it's having the swap shop like come under USG, I think that would actually make the problems more complicated. Well, that's something that we're hoping to work <laughs> with you guys. I, I don't know, like I said, it's, it's, this is sort of our last plea for help, because it's either we do nothing and let it die, or we come here and work it out with you guys to see if we could survive. So I will say, I, I did fairly recently reach out to the people at work to try and get a little bit more clarity, and I'm hoping to get a response. I've, I've gotten some responses, nothing substantive yet, but I'm hoping to get more information in the next couple of days. I just shut the meeting off about half an hour ago about this, um, and you know, we, can, we should definitely chat more about this. I agree. I hope you hear back from them soon as well. I do too. I got an out of office from someone, so yeah. I assume they're. She's probably not going to say anything with your boss. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, I, I, I kind of have a comment and a question. Um, I think the first comment is, you know, I think we should, I think there's a lot of people in here that want to figure this out because I think what you guys do is really awesome. Um, and then the question, I guess, is have you kind of looked at how other universities do it? I mean, I've got to assume there's swap shops. But even, I know other schools have student businesses um, that are, you know, affiliated with the university and things along those lines. If USC knows anything, it's kind of how to work through those administrative loopholes. And so whether it's through USC or not, I mean, I know from things like the food pantry, and Husky Market, and so many things, we've figured out ways. And I know you guys are on that tight timeline, but um, I think, you know, as a message of support, I think this is something that we can put people towards. And I know that there's probably a lot of interest here, and we can kind of coordinate those people as well. But I'm just throwing that question out there as well. Thank you. Um, and yeah, so I've actually done a, a research on this as well. And other organizations that have something similar to this, it's not necessarily a swap shop, it's a thrift store. So we can fully transition into a thrift store model and have people bring things like you do out of this closet, so you're using the credit and using that credit in the store. But it's fully cash. So it's, it's, it's different, but it's similar in a way. So it's, it's a thrift store versus us, which is a swap store. So in order to achieve something like that, we would need to fully switch um, how we operate, which is fine. Um, but yeah, and also a lot of those um, thrift stores at other colleges are under student agencies, which are student businesses run by the business school. And I've, again, I've tried pitching that idea and you know, there's just not a lot of response from UConn and the people that are in those positions, so yeah. Um, so, going off of what um, you said earlier, just now, so like, Husky Market is funded by USC. USC gives how much money? Over a million dollars. Alright, so like, can't USC be like, hey, here's X amount of money, and they create a program out of the swap shop? I think, that, you know, those are, those are all questions that kind of have to, there's always the tax implications. I, I don't know what that meant. Right here. You're never going to escape the tax questions. <laughs> <laughs> the, the tax attorneys will not let you escape. The IRS attorneys will not let you escape, right? I, we, should, we should definitely explore the options that we have. Also, Ben, if you have a meeting with any tax attorney or with the tax department, I beg you that you let me come to one side. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they want to let me come. You want to, we, we have like contacts in tax compliance. So I can definitely, I would love to join now them. that I know that that's, that's kind of the focus, I can I can reach out to them as well. Um, I'm also just wondering in terms of like funding solutions, have you thought about like actually renting an outside campus location? Because like now it's the issue that UConn is not allowing you to do so, but I was wondering if, like, if there's any options of like maybe like renting a place outside of campus and like just affiliating this like completely because it seems like Yukon is not doing anything for for its like whole like shop except for me a place. Um it, I mean if that actually is that like comes into like taxes and stuff. I'm just wondering if that has been considered an option. If not, why and what does it imply? They also have like another question in terms of like um, what is the concern or the issue with actually starting a tier two organization and then kind of really jumping into tier two? But like even with like having non-based individuals, like what is the issue with that? I mean, like as something to start with, you know, to tier three. Okay, so as the location off campus, I mean, I think it would honestly come down to structure because one, who is working the capital to lease out that building? How are we gonna keep it operating? There's accounting involved in that. And I guess like we would, if we go outside of UConn campus, we're physically operating as our own business. And how do we pass that down once say I graduate or he graduates? How do we pass that down to students with it being off of campus and having no actual tie to the UConn campus. So that's my thought in that process. Um, second question, um, the reason why I didn't go that route is because I didn't know how committed volunteers would be when working the store because in my opinion, I, I do think we all spend a lot of time working, especially in our individualized roles. Um, he spends 
hours checking everyone's payroll and making sure everything's correct. Young Nub spends hours making marketing posts, um, videos, all that kind of stuff. So I guess it really comes down to how involved are people willing to be. And you know, we've already, we've, we're already, everyone involved in it is being paid. So how do we go from being paid to volunteers? And how exactly does that structure look? I hope that answers your question. Yeah, one thing that I think could be explored there are a lot of university programs that have a source uh, associated student organizations, right? That kind of allows them, mm -hmm. if you function only as a student organization, you're right, like you can't pay your employees. But there are a lot of ways, like the tier two structure is very flexible and can kind of pretty easily be adapted to also kind of be a UConn program at the same time. That's Again, something that I, I can chat with you about if that's something that you'd be interested in. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know the exact nomenclature the rule, but we can hire coaches at tier two organizations. So you could have all your employees be as coaches and then save them $40 an hour and $10,000 a year. I don't know if you can do that for undergrads. Say, say it again. Do you hire undergrad coaches? I don't think there's any. Undergrad Coaches like for sports, for for. No rules against it. I mean, we don't put them on payroll. We can. I think we can explore what exactly you're talking about. Like instead of doing fourteen fifty an hour, give them one lump sum. Yeah, Krista is also here and can field some of these questions. No? No? Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to pass along the contact info um, at the end of the meeting, hours from now. I will send out an email with that contact info for anyone who wants to reach out directly. And otherwise, I think that this is a good avenue for um, this summer as we move forward to the end of the semester, the summer, maybe even going into fall, potentially services of pacing for people who are interested in being on the services committee. Okay, so next up we have an announcement from our grand parliamentarian who will give him your undivided attention. Do you want a microphone? All right, so as most of you know, I care deeply about the USG, but I uh, have to make an announcement tonight. Dear esteemed senators, unfortunately, I am a firm believer in transparency and want you to know that over the past 24 hours before the election, I was a victim of coercive blackmail via email regarding withdrawing from the election process. After extensively reviewing the circumstances with my legal counsel, I have been advised to resign from the election of Speaker of Senate, Parliamentarian, and ultimately resign as the CLAS Senator. Due to the events of over, of, due to the events over the last 24 hours, I feel unsafe within this organization. Therefore, I will be removing myself from any affiliation with the USG. I look forward to seeing all of you on campus. I am still an ally, a friend, and a person you can come to when you need advice. I hope you all have a wonderful night. Thank you. I love you. Okay, so with that, um, we're gonna move into a brief period of reports now because we have a lot on the agenda. We're gonna do this very quickly. We're only gonna do one loop. I don't know exactly how we're gonna do this because it's a little chaotic. Please don't trip and fall. I'm gonna ask that the directors come on down to the front and then if everyone can kind of grab to, or actually just around. Find your find a way. Maybe like you can get some directors yeah. towards the top of the stairs and most to the bottom and then if everyone can grab to each other. And for anyone who's new here and doesn't know what I'm talking about, typically we have so we have different people who are running committees, 
They, um, as well as in, in accordance with other members of governing board, we do report. So they give you basically a report of what they're working on, and you can check in and see what different parts of the organization are doing. So if you would like to get to know a particular committee member, um, we can briefly introduce all of them, and that way you know who to go to. We're only going to do one round of that because there's not a lot of time. Um, and I also, I believe our student trustee would like to call in um, for her component of the announcement. So I will just put a microphone to that part. So can all the directors come on down so that we can introduce you all? Also working 
are going to be working with all of the directors as soon as we figure out their identities to discuss kind of every, their <laughs> to discuss their priorities um, and what they want to do with their roles in the coming year. And now we're going to see some shifts in what it is that each USG committee wants to do. As always, and if you all have priorities, things that you really value, or things that you frankly think that we should not be spending money on, um, my inbox is always open, Slack, email, many of you, most of you have my number as well. Please, please, please reach out within the next couple of days. Um, the current hope is to get a draft of the budget by Monday and get that out to all of you. Um, we'd really like to have a week, but it's a week, of, it's a week in advance and I still don't know what the directors are. So, we're doing our best, we're going to move very quickly, but then just know that whatever document we vote on in a week is not going to be the final say on what USG spends this year. Um, and it will always be a continuing conversation from this budget to the one that we hopefully do sometime in July to the final, final budget that we normally do in late September, early October. Um, so I really, really value your input and your voice, and if you all have things to say, you know how to reach Thank you. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Ben. And now I'm going to put Anya on speaker so she can give the trustee announcement. We're going to try this out. Anya, can you do a testing? Yeah, I just said it's Anya. Yeah, can we get Anya? Here. Okay, Here. trustee, take it away. Okay, so um, from like more of like a Title IX position, um, I don't. I know that not everybody has received an email about um, the um, my memo on behalf of women in USG. But last Thursday we had a discussion about um, you know women experiences in USG and how some people are. <clears throat> I'm sorry. How uh, some people have they feel disrespected in certain areas and. Um, I mentioned this in the memo and in my email, but you know, this is a learning opportunity for everybody, so I really encourage you. Um, I hope that that email will get sent out to everybody very soon if you haven't gotten it already. Um, but, you know, we're not pointing fingers or blaming any individual person because, frankly, like, the things that I listed as, you know, common issues are things that multiple people talk about from multiple different perspectives. Um, but, yeah, just I would suggest once you get that email, if you haven't already, read through that document as it definitely um, is, is a good is a good starting point. And then from the trustee perspective, I had my first board meeting today, which was fun. Um, and, oh no, I'm getting another call. Wait, guys, I have to call back. One second. Okay. All right, Anya. I'll call you back. All right, thank you. So also, if you would, if you would like to see what Anya was speaking about with the women experience document, it's tied. It's uh, not tied. It's linked in the agenda. Okay, and with that, we'll move on. I think we're on chief diversity officer. Am I wrong? Yes. 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 Oh, okay. So. Okay. Um, so <laughs> going off of the women experience the USG came up with the documents. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was a really great discussion. Um, for those who went, thank you for your input and letting us know how you feel in the organization. Um, I got a lot of messages and emails um, following, just talking about how a lot of women really appreciated this and really resonated with it. Um, I'm just going to pull yeah. it out. If you have some time, definitely go in the minutes and read it. Um, go all the way down. Lots of errors and improvements. You can really good job laying everything out. Um, and, just, just, and just some steps moving forward. So we're definitely going to incorporate some gender bias training and leadership training into our um, retreat for. Um, onboarding at the beginning of the semester next year. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. And all the stuff that's mentioned here is going to be implemented into that training. But yeah, just you know, keep in mind that, like Anya said, this is a, a learning opportunity and we are growing humans. So just keep in mind that there's always room for improvement. Um, there's currently a scheme and limb event going on now, partnering with the ASAC, WAS, and UCTV for Asian. American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Um, and then there's a bike pack town hall tomorrow, uh, hosted by Student Development, which Sarah probably would have mentioned if she had had to speak or if she was here. Um, <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> okay, so you obviously, probably speaking, if you have questions for them, you can just go ask them during the break. Um, I'm going to call on you back because. She's now available again, so we're going to briefly call her back and move on to the next um, report.
I mean, we're just developing new skill sets today. All right, Anya, you're up to continue your report. Okay, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Do your bit anymore. Anyway, um, so yeah, so just a couple quick updates. Um, from the budget perspective, we're still waiting to hear back from the legislator to get a more solid idea of what the budget will be for fiscal year 2425. But there was a small update, which is a positive trending in the positive direction, which is that. The Appropriations Committee voted to increase uh, last month's rate of cost. So that means that money um, that would have not rolled over from this year will be rolling over into next year or into the following year. Um, so that's a positive thing. I forget the specific number. I think it was something around 50 million. But um, so yeah, it's a, it's a good thing. Um, but we could do better, um, hopefully. And then. Um, Um, I mean, that was the biggest thing, um, and the other thing that kind of we thought was going to be a bigger thing, but it wasn't, nobody even had a discussion about it, was that the COVID-19 um, vaccination is no longer going to be required, um, which I find interesting. Didn't really know how to feel about that. I wish I had done some more research, but it just passed and nobody said anything, so I'm like, all right. Um, but yeah, those are the two things bigger things that I want to talk about. Um, and then, um, yeah, if anyone has any questions for me. Oh yeah, the other thing I was gonna say is that um, both myself and Dan Scano really, really, really encourage people to show up to Student Life Committee for the public comment section or just generally sitting on the public parts of that committee meeting because that is a really great place for students to get directly involved in the uh, initiative that the board's working on. So if you want to come to the next Student Life Committee, which will probably be, probably be in um, the fall, just reach out to me and I'll um, I'll let you know what the meeting time is and get you the WebEx link and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's because I know there are some people that are interested in getting involved in the board, but they're like, you know, not sure where to start. And I think Student Life is a, is a great place to start and um, you've been personally invited by the um, board chair, Dan Toscano. So I really encourage people to do that if you're interested in that. But yeah, any questions? Doesn't look like there's any on you, but we'll direct them all towards you. Okay, awesome. All right, see you guys soon. Okay, well, thank you. Bye. Okay, next, my report. I'm going to keep it really brief. There's not that much to report on. Uh, this is our final Senate. We have one more. There's like an emergency sort of Senate next week that will be chaired by the new speaker. If you have questions about Will's announcement, you can come speak to me after talk to, after Senate. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna keep it at that. So then we we'll move on to the Vice President. Peter, take it away. I'll be quick. Um, if you missed caucus last week, we presented on kind of our findings, everything we learned at Costco down in Texas. Um, brought some really cool stuff back. So if anyone wants that presentation, has ideas they want to work on over the summer. Uh, we've got some really great stuff. It's just now a matter of kind of putting it into action. So please let myself know. Um, beyond that, thank you everyone who attended the banquet. We're just wrapping up some hiring. Um, anyone who's interested in applying for SOC supervisor, we are still accepting applications. Um, so if you're a very organized person, you like, you want to get our USG office space like in shape, let me know. Uh, please apply. And there's food down here. Please feed yourself and take care of yourself. It's going to be a really long meeting. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank Ooh. you, Peter. And then we finally have our president for the last time. Final Ooh. report. Come on, give it. If so, if it doesn't pass, we're going to have to try to go back next semester uh, as an organization and continue for a bylaw change to happen before it's implemented. Uh, but we're figuring that out in May 7th, uh, 7th meeting. So folks who are in the organization will know what happened in that meeting and also what will be the outcome and what will next semester look like in terms of ABR. So thank you guys for um, staying interested in the process. And I hope um, you guys will be a part of the group that makes it actually happen. <laughs>
like during my four years here. So I really, really want to make sure that he or she like can help in whatever that looks like. Um, but my one report out I have is first of all, this is like my last slide. Oh my goodness. That's so no. So I just want to thank every single person for like um, just making me feel included and so happy to be here. Um, I couldn't be funky without every single <laughs> one of you guys. Um, but lastly, one of our last big hoorahs for student services is the period box. Um, 500 boxes in like four hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to have a packing party tomorrow. Um, like ha half of committee will be committee, half of committee will be a packing party. So if you want to come for committee at 7, Student Union 3, 2, 4, please come. If you just want to come for the packing party, it's at 7.30 in the old Paxis office. Totally come out. Uh, we'll have some music giving you fun. So that's it. Thank you. Okay, so now we move into our voting items, and the first is the approval of the minutes. Does anyone have any questions or points of discussion on these meeting and these meeting minutes? Okay, beautiful. I love that you all checked for all of the mistakes. Um, clearly, we've all taken a good look at them, and they look excellent. So thank you very much to SOC and to our minute takers to do all the hard work in getting our minutes out there. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna motion to pass these by unanimous consent, since there doesn't seem to be any discussion. So any objections to passing these by unanimous consent? Okay. See. Ah, objection. There's a C. What? There's a C in my name. You can't pass them. You guys need to make a determination on if you believe that spending uh, $5,598.50 on travel for this RSO to go, they went on to. What was the RSO? It was, it was AIAA. It's an aeronautics club. I don't remember what the full name stands for. But essentially, what they were doing was they were traveling to 
counting 15. Okay. Okay. Sixteen. Okay, sixteen. So all against, please raise your hand. <laughs> One. One. And then two. Up, up to two, okay? And then three. No, we can't vote. <laughs> and then abstaining. Abstaining if you're a senator, to clarify. Okay. CGO afterwards if you're abstaining. Yeah, okay. Six. CGO afterwards if you're abstaining. Six. Okay, so right. sixteen to six. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so by a vote of sixteen two to six, this motion passes. So congratulations to the club that will be getting. Okay, next we move into uh, our first piece of legislation, which is an amendment to the bylaws of the undergraduate government regarding under office hours. Could the authors come on down? To present the legislation. Okay. Two legislation in one day. So this is regarding office hours. I think we'll put a I've been told most people don't read the bylaws when they come in right away, but <laughs> I did. And so the reason for this is that under the bylaws, all senators are supposed to hold office hours weekly. That has not been happening, I've been told, in the last two years at least. Three. Or maybe, maybe more. <laughs> Anyways, so pretty much what this is is striking everywhere in the bylaws that it says senators are supposed to hold office hours. And then also we reference the Constitution because Technically, if senators aren't fulfilling their duties, then they can be or gotten rid of in another capacity. Yeah, so this is basically just formally getting rid of a requirement that has been informally not been required for like years now. Okay, so we'll go into questions. So, question. Yeah, so we're striking out the keys. Mm -hmm. well, you know, <laughs> we think that there should be restructuring later. Okay. And so that's one of the things. Uh, okay. Yeah, let me, let me, yeah, let, let's show you the whole thing. Yeah. And so. But, well, this, yeah, go down to all of their, their four. That's all we need to see. Excuse me. And I know that there's other legislation that will later be in the works to clarify what that means. But for now, just to make sure that senators are still engaging with constituents, but kind of leaving it in flux so senators don't come in and think, oh my gosh, I have to hold office hours. I'm not going to join because I don't want to have to be responsible for moving one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Any other questions? Over here, over here. Oh, yep. Does this count for all senators or do you like I would assume they don't like it. All have options. Yeah. We do? Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. 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 Other questions? Beautiful. Any points of discussion? Okay. Right. Practically, nothing is going to change. Still gonna have, people still have to go to committee, and people haven't been holding office hours anyway, so nothing. Functionally, it's going to change to the Senate of the Just to clarify that. Um, wouldn't it still be for assignments? Yeah. I don't. I think yeah. Did you want to get rid of it, or did you no, want to keep it? Oh, yeah, because it still makes committee yeah. assignments. Yeah. I think we're going to have Oh, my gosh. Just result, like, 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 comes up his. Yeah. Uh, I didn't actually make myself. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I think I gave you an I'm glad someone is doing something about it. I'm not making sure we keep stuff. 
for those who do read the bylaws, um, any of us questions? Yeah. yeah, just a quick thing. Um, just because I know like there's a reason why office hours are just in the first place. Like you want to be there for your constituents, you want your constituents to be able to approach you. That's something I've been thinking about after being elected and how I can do that. So I think even, I guess, the challenge out there for the whole organization is how can we better develop those spaces for where we can reach our constituents, be there for our constituents, whether that's be there for you know the business school constituents that I represent or whoever. Um, I don't represent the business school students. Well, I do, but anyway. Um, so I just throw that out there as part of discussion. So yeah, definitely think about when upcoming legislation happens, like, all right, how do we want to be reaching out to constituents? You know, is it through more coffee hours, stuff like that? But for now, we can do it. Any other questions or points of discussion? Okay, seeing none, we're going to go to a vote. So all in favor, please raise your hand. You guys can also vote in favor of the legislation. Okay. Uh, who's taking count? Can somebody else take count? One of y'all are back to It's All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, Okay, so next we move into the next piece of legislation. So yes, Adam, you stay right there. A resolution concerning the installation of condom dispensers in bathrooms and resident hall laundry rooms. So Dylan, come on down, and the two of you can present whenever you're ready. I just heard somebody say, what? You guys better be reading legislation in advance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so I guess I'll just start. Um, so as some of you guys know, there are tampon dispensers kind of strewn across campus, which are installed in the unisex bathrooms. So this uh, legislation is kind of to mirror that, but with condom dispensers. And so our idea is essentially to put condom dispensers in the unisex bathrooms in pretty much all of those buildings which the type of dispensers are currently at. And then also, we want to put them in um, laundry rooms in residence hall baths, or laundry rooms and residence halls across campus because we, basically the impetus of this bill is for when people are, um, you know, engaging in sexual intercourse, maybe uh, it hasn't wasn't planned and they don't have problems available and they need to have some sort of way to get them quickly, and so we want to put them in. Um, laundry rooms which are just by inherent they're gender neutral, they're accessible to everyone. And so people can and it will be free by the way. Uh, and so people can just go down and pick them and then leave and then go do the business. Well Dylan, anything you want to add? Uh, I think that you can leave. Okay. So any questions? Well this was passed by student services, so I don't know if we are read us if you write us as a sponsor.
Edwin. Hey, so in the last whereas, where it says according to the CDC and um, common distributions program have been proven to increase condom use, prevent HIV, and to even save money. Yep. Save money how? Um, well, in this case, it would be for the students. I mean, unfortunately, that pro is just the quote itself. It's not, I put that in, it's not like linked to anything. Mm -hmm. That's just a quote on the website. But um, it would definitely save money for us students because we wouldn't have to go out and buy mm condoms. -hmm. And then, sorry, just another clarifying question. So the free condom dispensers will only be in unisex bathrooms across campus and residence halls on Yes. Okay. Defend the, uh, uh, your argument that students are saving money by us as USG possibly paying for it or facilities paying for it through the bills, whereas people paying for it as needed. Because the, let's say someone's not engaging in sexual intercourse and they don't need condoms, then they're paying for something they don't need to waste the same money. Well, I just think the same argument. I think the same argument. So how is this different from other dispensary programs? Because I know at least from most of the residents calls I've gone on every floor there's like a little bucket with the free condoms from dental bands. What what's the difference between that and like those are RAs that do that. Oh Yeah, okay. 
Kind of like a similar style. Any other questions? Okay, that's, that's great. Move into discussion. Any points of discussion on this legislation? Okay, seeing that we're going to move into a vote. So all in favor, please raise your hands. Again, only if you're a senator and you're currently a senator. <laughs> we need a title for that. Like, Maybe I should run this. Counter of the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> you literally yeah, need I <laughs> Okay, 15, and put your hands down. All those against, please raise your hands. You've got one. And then all, sorry, counter, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then all of Sadie, please raise your hands. Okay, so counter, what's the final one? Um, 15, 15 to 1 to 7. Okay, by a vote of 15 to 1 to 7, this legislation passes. Congratulations. <laughs> Hi everyone, for those of you who do not know me, hi, I'm Alice, I'm the Transfer Student Association Senator. And my legislation is basically just covering the fact that WOW Weekend, the Week of Welcome, does not involve students who transfer to the SOARS campus or campus change. And essentially, I'm just going over how there's over 600 students transferring campus change in fall. And the only thing they're being offered is an orientation, excuse me. So I believe that WOW Weekend is like an essential um, experience, and I think that the transfer students should be involved in campus change students. So I'm just, that's basically what my legislation is about. I'm just going over that, talking about the figures, how many students transfer in campus change each semester, and yeah, that's basically it. Beautiful. Okay, any questions for Alice? <laughs> Go ahead. So, I was a part of the Spring of Stories program. Mm -hmm. Would you Same. be in favor of doing a WOW weekend in, in the spring? Yeah, so currently my legislation is covering the one for the fall because that's the one that's coming up first. Um, but hopefully if this passes, my TSA and I have been working with the WOW weekend already. We're in contact with them, but they're for it. Like they want transfer students to be WOW leaders and everything already. Um, we would implement some of those events in the spring. Just, it's a little different because it's colder out in the when, like the springtime. So we would have to come up with different events, but I'm totally for it. There's hardly anything when I campus changed in the spring. So, Norm, see your hand. Are we talking about like the transfer and campus change students moving in early? Um, there hasn't been conversation about that. I'm unaware. So, WOW starts early, it's like the day Friday. So that could be definitely something I can talk to with the WOW coordinator about transfer and campus change students moving in early. The only issue is, is the campus campus and transfer students that are moving early are typically sophomores or older. Um, they're not really freshmen. So that's like the only thing that I feel like would conflict with them moving early. So, SEC wouldn't necessarily address this, it would be more so like the oh, yeah. WOW um, program itself. So mm -hmm. I, would, I would advise maybe amending that to just reflect that um, you would call upon the WOW program to change that because it would be more sort of the time so if you are gonna like go forward with conversations about them moving early, you need to reach out to rest because they're the ones who like allow people to move their yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Any points of discussion? Seeing none, we're gonna move into a vote. Okay, so all in favor, please. <laughs> Alright, rise high. <laughs> Will you get him with a hat? <laughs> 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
23. Oh, Allison, you voting for your number 25. 25 looks okay. Raise your hands down. Anybody against? Please raise your hands. Okay, I see none. And then all abstaining, please raise your hands. 25 to nothing to three. Yeah, okay, beautiful. So you have to 25 to four. 25 to zero to four. 25 to zero to four. Piece of legislation passes. Congrats.
Um, the pageant is next Thursday from 6 to 8 over at the recital hall um, near, you know, like the middle of uh, downtown stores. Please show up, support everyone. Um, it's going to be really good. We have these really dope MCs who are performing. And we also have um, six students representing, representing the ACC. So if you have some time next Thursday. Thank you. Woo! Okay, so I quickly add this as a discussion item. At, we won't, don't need to have a long discussion about it. Um, but sitting here in Austin, I can't help but feel like this is a more intimate environment. And I asked a few of you, and people seem to be feeling similarly. So I'm wondering if anyone has any thoughts about people's feelings for the future. Is this something that we like? Do we like being in here? No. Then you want to get started? I hate oh. it. Oh. <laughs> 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 it's so wrong. I'm going to be honest. The seats are uncomfortable. It's like. Like 
is that we are not sitting with gut board all in the front separate from all of you. I think that, I think that, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. What do you mean all of us? You're normally at the front table. Don't, don't start. <laughs> right, I think that when we have gut board physically separate from the Senate, I think it, it stops us from communicating with the senators. And so I, I do want to bring that. Um, one thing, one other place, and I, I'd like Olivia to comment on the accessibility, because I don't, I'm not necessary. that's not my area of expertise. What about like Schenker, which has kind of like the
good. Okay, we'll wrap it up. Um, okay, so with that, we're going to move into announcements. The first couple are from Josh, if you want to just stand up. Do I have a microphone or are you all set? I think all of them are from Josh. I think, yeah, they're all, they're all mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, this weekend is Spring Weekend, so Halal is doing two events. They're doing a spring themed Shabbat on Friday at 6 in the Halal building, and then the Horse Barn Hill, they're doing yoga at 7.30 on Saturday. Um, this is open to anyone, even if you're not Jewish or Jewish affiliate, you can still come and hang out, it's going to be fun. I'm also running a program after um, yoga on 7.30, uh, at like 8 o'clock. Um, I wrote up a template for legislation for the new senators in the room and the old ones that kind of want to refresh or like a blank document, it's linked here. And tomorrow night there is an interfaith, interreligion event with the Catholic Center, Hillel, and I think there's two other orgs in the library on the plaza level in 169, I think is what it is, at 6. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions for Josh? Oh, what's the program you're running? Um, so I'm doing a Havdala program. So on Friday, from Friday night till Saturday night, uh, there's something called Shabbat, which is a day of rest for Jews, and Havdala is a separation. <laughs> and it's basically understanding that now we've come out of rest and we're going to start the week fresh and basically mentally preparing for that.
Drew Spinelli. Do solemnly promise. Do solemnly promise. To uphold the Constitution. To uphold the Constitution. Bylaws and rules of the undergraduate student government. Bylaws and rules of the undergraduate student government. At the University of Connecticut in stores. At the University of Connecticut in stores. As Vice President. As Vice President. I promise to execute all duties and responsibilities. I promise to execute all duties and responsibilities. Vested in me. Vested in me. And shall work diligently to ensure and shall work diligently to ensure the successful and efficient operation the successful and efficient operation of the administration to which I have been elected of the administration to which I have been elected bylaws and rules of the undergraduate student government of the undergraduate student government at the University of Connecticut in stores at the University of Connecticut in stores as comptroller as comptroller I promise to execute all duties and responsibilities I promise to execute all duties and responsibilities vested in me vested in me and shall work diligently and shall work diligently to make ethical, sound financial decisions. To make ethical, sound financial decisions. To the very best of my ability. To the very best of my ability. <laughs> Bylaws and rules of the undergraduate student government. Bylaws and rules of the undergraduate student government. At the University of Connecticut in stores. At the University of Connecticut in stores. As Chief Diversity Officer. As Chief Diversity Officer. I promise to execute all the duties and responsibilities. I promise to execute all the duties and responsibilities. Vested in me. Vested in me. And shall work diligently to ensure diversity within our organization. And shall work diligently. <laughs> diligently to ensure diversity within our organization and promote equality to all voices of all backgrounds and promote equality to all voices of all backgrounds and identities to the very best of my abilities to, and identities to the very best of my abilities <laughs> University of Connecticut in stores. At the University of Connecticut in stores. I promise. 
I promise that I shall consistently and faithfully that I shall consistently and faithfully earn the vote of the constituents earn the vote of the constituents whom I have been elected to serve and represent whom I have been elected to serve and represent finally I shall maintain a vigilant eye finally I shall maintain a vigilant eye on the welfare of the entire student government on the welfare of the entire student government that we, that we may all diligently work together that we may all diligently work together to successfully advocate for successfully advocate for represent and serve represent and serve the entire student body the entire student body <laughs> Thank you. 
credit class for your time in USG. So the things that you would already be responsible for doing, showing up at Senate, showing up at caucus, committee, um, writing legislation, that's all part of the class. It's really hard to fail the class. So I would suggest if it fits into your schedule, um, you enroll in the class. If you're looking for a permission number, that's me. So you can email me uh, and whoever gets elected as your speaker and parliamentarian serve as the TAs for the classes. So, that's it. Thank you, Krista. <laughs> I highly recommend reaching out to Krista and getting to know her. If you end up uh, in various leadership positions at the OR, you will definitely work with her, which is just a great person I know. Um, really, really nice. Okay, so we're going to move on to the rest of the public comment. Who wants to speak next? All right, Ryan, you're up. Is that a three? All right, sorry, this is a little important. Also, you can come like closer to the... Are you a senator? You're looking good. No, no I'm he's not. Employee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to begin this by being a little more sincere and slightly more personal than I originally intended on being, which is the truth that I wrote it that way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> USG and I have been blessed with impeccable leadership and continual dedication to the causes that we all hold here. What began for a job as me has quickly evolved into a family, and I hope that that sentiment is shared between all of us. I think that our leaders have all done a phenomenal job, and I thank all of them sincerely. But, and I won't say that I love them too. Um, and just on this notion of family, all that I can do is speak on my personal experiences for my brother Kyle. His passion, his dedication, his continual efforts for our student body, and I believe that he will do the same way that he has through our friendship with continual care and lots of love. I see this dedication in all of us. I see it in Arunima as well. The kindness and care has shown that we can accomplish all things. It's with this excess of time in all positions that I think that we can rest assured that no matter what, our efforts for the future will come to fruition. And I just want to say that we cannot be more blessed with everybody running here. And that, you, know, you guys have all been fantastic to me and for everybody else. And thank you all. Okay, who wants to speak after running? Okay, Cindy, you're awesome. <clears throat> um, Hi, guys. It's fun being here as not a member of USG, right? Woo! <laughs> what? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> I forgot. I still do have responsibilities. <laughs> 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 okay. Anyways, um, so I'm going to be talking about for the future of what you she will do next year and years to come. Um, everyone here just has such a spark of like passion and intention for being here. It's just, it's really, really awesome to be a part of this community. Um, I, whoever like get, ultimately gets this position will be the funkiest of elections, but I do want to give specific kudos to Ali. Um, when I first started as student services director, the person that I met most frequently with virtually was Ali when I was doing all my hiring of my coordinators. And I had a lot of interviews. We have like six employees. And I think I like interviewed like five people for each interview and Ali was there for pretty much every one of them. So I took a lot of her time during the summer. Um, but I was so obviously appreciative for you always being there. And I remember like after like the 30 minute interview I would conduct, she would stay with me for an extra 15 to 20 minutes um, debriefing with those candidates with me and giving me the most insightful um, feedback. I was so appreciative and it really helped me like figure out like who, like what I wanted student services to look like and who I wanted to be on my team. Um, and I remember when she told me that she was a sophomore, I was like, <laughs> I was like, damn girl, like you are so insightful. Like I was not there when I was um, um, a sophomore and 
Um, I remember she was first telling me like how involved she was freshman year because I had this um, coordinator who was like super involved. I was like, oh my god, they'll be too spread thin. They won't be able to dedicate themselves to USG. But she told me that her freshman year she was involved with so many things and she was still able to be so present in this organization and still so dedicated. Um, and I think as a speaker, like just being so dedicated to the organization and making herself so accessible in regards to how many hours she pulls, like, pulls in PSG is like super admirable and super impressive. Um, and I think you'd be really, really well equipped to um, like Irene, you set some high expectations, girl. You are like incredible. Yeah. And I think really, Ali, like you, um, could serve so well in that position um, and, and live up to the legacy that I've Irene. So. Um, yeah, I just want to give major kudos to everyone in this org, but definitely major praise to everything that you've helped me with in student services and my team. And I'm going to that trip, I might have cried like three times on the trip, which is super uncomfortable for everybody involved. <laughs> so I apologize. But um, I'm really, really used to isolating myself. Um, and I was talking to her today about it. I think extrovert people are just isolators when they are in rough periods of time. But I think every time I did break down, I turned around and a room was right behind me. Um, rubbing my shoulder, making sure I was okay, just talking me through it. Even though it's something I'm not used to at all, um, and it definitely benefited, benefited me for that trip in, in the long run. She's probably the best person we could have. Um, definitely our mother, perfect mother for Senate. Um, probably looking out for everybody in Senate, all of our senators and our institution senators and the ones who aren't in Senate and just like to show up like myself and Ryan. Bye, Senate. Um, but now I'm not in Senate and things like that. Um, and I thank her for that and I think we'll be thankful for her um, in the future for that. So thank you very much. Oh, oh, that's Krista. K R I. Yeah. 
um, in my class, I don't see them here. So clearly we have an issue with getting people into our organization and keeping them here. Um, and so that's a really big thing that I want to work on this year. Big thing, mentorship. That's something I'm super passionate about. I had an amazing mentor in Irene. I was hired as deputy speaker my first month on campus. Um, and I wouldn't be in this organization if I didn't have that role and I didn't have that mentor, that accountability partner. Um, being proactive in some of those check-ins. A lot of times, you know, when we were on Senate leadership, we were checking in with people who hadn't showed up to Senate all semester. And then at that point, it, they're a little far gone. It's hard to rope them back in. Being proactive, checking in with them before the problem actually hits um, is a way to constantly keep people in, making sure that you're checking in on them. They know you care. They know that you're there. Um, and then sort of the last thing that I'll finish up with is community. That's a big thing that I've tried to foster this year, doing things like the retreat, the end of the year event, <laughs> not the banquet. Um, really trying to have you guys look to the person next to you and being like, this is my friend. I would go to lunch with them, I would hang out with them. I look forward to coming to Senate. Senate is a fun time because I know that the people here are the people here for me and I can work with them, I can talk with them, I can just be myself with them. Um, so that's something that I really want to continue to grow and foster as speaker. Um, so I have 10 seconds, 15 seconds left. Um, thank you for hearing me speak. Um, I really, really look forward to answering all of your questions. Please ask me questions and ask me to clarify about this stuff because I'm super passionate about all of it. And love you guys. <laughs>
Finally, my third major goal will be recruitment. In our spring election, there was not a single contested Senate race. And we're going into the fall with 29 vacancies and an additional 14 seats up for election. In the role of speaker, I will work to fill every vacancy in the fall election by reaching out to cultural centers, caregiver organizations, faculty members, and anyone else on campus to help encourage new voices to join USD. With transparent recruitment efforts and a broader range of students in our organization, I hope to improve USP's image with the student body and get a better sense of what the most pressing needs on campus are. While these are my personal goals as speaker, my most important role in this position will be listening to all of you. I encourage all of you to reach out to me at any time for any reason, and I'm happy to meet with you to discuss your ideas, concerns, and goals as members of USG. Whether I am elected speaker or not, I look forward to working with all of you next year, and thank you for your consideration. Okay, so those were both two very wonderful opening statements. I hope that gave you a glimpse at the candidates that you're looking at now for speaker. But now you get to ask them the hard-hitting questions to get to know them even more. So. Can we go into questions first and then we go into discussion? Oh, okay. uh, the, do we put that in the wrong order? <laughs> no, no, we, we, we just, yeah, it is. Just question and discussion. So, um, I know we put out a form so that we could get a sense of how many people wanted to ask questions, but even if you didn't fill out the form, you're more than welcome to ask a question as long as you are a center. Um, we are hearing one and a half minutes per, or is that for discussion? Or would we have a cap on the length of responses to questions we do? It's 1.5. Uh, yeah, that's cool. And then two, people get two minutes to, like, in the discussion. Okay. Okay. We have a I would Okay. So could you raise your hand if you are a sender and you have a question to ask in this election? Okay, we have one question? Seriously? Oh wow, okay, two? I mean, that makes it a lot easier. Three, Three four. four. All right, so what we can do is, why don't we go across the room this way, and then if we see new hands come up, we can go back once we hit that. Does that make sense? Okay, so Angela, why don't you get us started? Sure. Oh, and also pause. So what we can do is, um, do either of you have a preference on who starts first? Either way, for the next, we'll flip back and forth, but do you have a preference on who speaks first? Uh, Kyle can go first, can go first, can go first. Okay, so then for this one, for you know, Kyle will answer it first, and Allie will answer it first. It was so big and so expansive that it was a little bit overwhelming, but I kind of saw that, like, there's so many different areas to have a hand in. Um, personally, like, my personal point of advocacy is, like, disparities in healthcare. Being a nursing major, I'm really interested in that. Impact of COVID-19 on communities of color, that sort of thing. Um, sexual health, reproductive health, super passionate about that stuff. So I saw USG as a way to kind of supplement that, but the more that I got into it, I saw the value of just having people involved, talking to constituents, talking to people, having those relationships, having a community of dedicated advocates on campus, because I personally couldn't do everything. So having a community where people feel comfortable, they can collaborate. Um, Husky Bond says like, if you wanna go far, go by yourself. If you wanna go beyond, do it with other people, you know? And that's exactly what it is. Like, if you wanna go above and beyond, you need a community, you need collaboration. Um, and that's something that I wanna bring in as speaker. I wanna create a community in Senate um, so that people feel comfortable to collaborate, combine their resources, and really go above and beyond for the students on this campus. Okay, so I'll move on to Angela. What action steps or things do you want to implement in order to really get the, the relationship better and more like communication between the board and Senate and then Senate and students? Okay, so for GovCord and um, Senate specifically, um, like I said before, like I want to get to know each and every senator personally and their specific advocacy interests um, because I feel like I have a good grasp of the people on GoFord and can be able to connect those people. Um, GoFord is very busy. It's hard for them to reach out individually, and so that's what I see the role of the speaker being. Um, utilizing spaces like caucus to facilitate conversations, getting people to know, like, John the poli sign major, not John the president. You know what I mean? Like, sorry to call you out. Um, <laughs> but getting to know people personally, again, community, people who like each other and are friends, we're better together than strangers. Um, in terms of actual item, I, action, oh my god, actual action items, 
um, for Senate and constituents, like I was saying before, I think ex officios are so in touch with their constituents because they come in with a very specific mission. Um, they come in knowing that they represent one area and usually they're workers of that place or they're just very in touch with it on their e-boards, that sort of thing. So figuring out maybe how they can help other senators get in touch, I think the tabling is a great thing um, that you guys have started. I give you guys huge props to that because I heard it was really successful and I think that's really important. Um, creating, like Josh actually gave me this idea, um, creating like emails, like CLAS senator at usg.com.edu so that there can be a collaborative space for people to email. Um, bringing back some version of office hours, not anything as strict, but having like coffee hours, that sort of thing, a less informal um, sort of setting. So I'm out of time, but <laughs> I have more ideas. So in terms of connecting governing board and Senate, I think that comes from personal relationships. You know, I'd like to ask some of our early classes, you know, get everyone in the room, get people moving around, talk with each other. I want every senator to know here are the governing board members. Here's what they do, and here's who they are as people. You know, now in terms of getting us connected with our constituents, I think that comes from a few things. First off, I think it comes from being accessible and being out there. You know, Angela, you and I were at the table yesterday, and I think we had some great conversations with some constituents who we wouldn't have heard from otherwise. And I think it also comes from diversity in our membership, which is part of that recruitment goal that I talked about. Um, you know, I think there is a perception that there's a certain archetype of who joins U.S. So I'd like to reach out and encourage oh, oh. 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 Sorry, every time I just touch it, it makes a noise. How's the time? Yeah, it is. Just for both of you, just pass it back and forth. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, I think that when we have a more diverse group of students, a broader perspective of students, we will have better relationships with our constituents. From my experience, the people who don't like USG think of us as this faceless thing and <laughs> don't know anyone in. So when we fill those vacancies with people from groups who are not well represented in the organization, I think that our relationship will naturally improve. Okay. Um, let's see. So to increase accessibility in USG, um, I think that comes from a number of things. I think that comes from making sure all of our communications are accessible, making sure that we're in accessible meeting spaces. You know, I am not personally an expert on all issues of accessibility, so I'll have to defer to some more qualified voices on that issue. Now, um, in terms of uplifting disabled voices, again, I would say recruitment. Um, I am you and I both are members of Diversability. I would love to have more members of that organization in USC. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I really think it is just a matter of talking to people, making sure that we know what the issues are so that we can address it. Um, not specific to USG, but at the table in the event, um, I had an individual come up and bring up an issue of accessibility at South Campus with the ongoing construction. And that's just something that I was not personally aware of, that now that I am, I'm working to connect that individual with the right people, making sure that I actually have the right space in there, and that's really what it's all about. It's not going to be too loud if I use this, but... Um, yeah, I definitely agree with Kyle. I think very similar... Oh, ah, um, very similarly, a lot of it is in recruit, uh, recruitment, and I have a lot of experience with recruitment this year. Um, utilizing the right people, knowing that, you know, I might not be in all those spaces because, you know, I'm not a part of the disability or some of these other organizations, but knowing to connect, like the diversity senator. Hey, do we want to add another seat? Like, what do we want to do to kind of bring these people into the organization? Being very strategic about that. Um, and in terms of, um, you know, making spaces more accessible, again, like expanding the communications team. I've worked very closely with the comms team this year. Um, I plan to work very closely with them again next year um, in terms of advertising every single Senate that we have, every single committee that we have, even though that's not directly Senate. Um, you know, advertising that, you know, if we do start like Senator emails, that that's a thing. Um, 
coffee hours, like making sure that this information is accessible and not just on the Instagram, that it's on the website, that we get our LinkedIn page up and running, that it's in the newsletter, and that goes out consistently. Um, and we make sure that groups that represent diverse communities are in these spaces and we're ensuring that they're seeing this information, even if that means going into those spaces personally and delivering the information that way. Um, I think is a big thing, just making sure people know about it. Um, and then just working with, obviously, whoever the accessible um, coordinator is for next year, um, and making sure that our spaces kind of uphold all of those same things. Okay. Do we have any other questions? How do you see diversity as a mission at the forefront of your work and all of your missions? Definitely. Um, so I think a big thing, again, is working with the CDO's office, um, which I have a lot of experience with doing this year. Um, that's a big thing that I was super passionate about for hiring is making sure that they took a very active role this year um, and sort of ensuring that all of our processes were equitable and inclusive. Um, again, like with comms, expanding it into those areas. I think ex officios, I think right now are underutilized. I think, you know, I heard from a senator that said that they feel tokenized. They feel like they're just a placeholder in this organization. And I want to make sure that they understand that they're so important, they're so vital to getting those voices heard. They are the representative of these cultural centers and these diverse identities in our center, in, in our organization. So uplifting those people, understanding that they, they have experiences that I'll never experience. Recognizing my own bias, my own privileges, I think is the first step. Um, and then really making a commitment to work with those people, especially in Senate, to make sure that their voices are always heard in every conversation, that everything that I do is talk with them. Understanding what struggles that they might have that other senators might not have, what barriers they have, um, and being in these spaces. Because I think that is really important and that definitely will be a focus um, for next year. <laughs> You know, no, I agree. It's all about reaching out, making sure that everyone is getting a seat at the table, a seat in the room. I'll also add that, you know, as part of my job as deputy speaker this year, um, I've been in charge of the academic compensation program, which I'm very proud of. You know, our kind of fundamental principle behind compensating members of USG is that we don't want everyone in the room to be someone who can afford to put in all this work for free. And while we I'm sure Ben will tell you we don't have the budget to pay our centers. Um, this program is kind of a great way to fill that gap, and I'm very proud of that. It's something that I hope to advertise and improve my efforts next year. You know, also, I agree with ex officios being so important, and I think they'll be vital in helping us get more members to fill those vacant seats going into the fall. While the cultural centers all have seats dedicated to the cultural centers, I'd like to have members running for academic seats, for residential seats, for MCD seats make sure that we have all the voices we can in the room and that we're deferring to them when the time is appropriate. Are there any other questions? Does anyone else have, just raise your hand if you have a question. I think you're a little Angela. Oh, Angela. Oh, I'm so sorry, Angela. No, uh, yeah. You both spoke at least once, so. Okay. Um, there was the membership. Um, mentorship mm -hmm. program that was going to happen earlier, and I know that it didn't. And I think a lot of people thought that was a good idea. Would you guys would either be like work on implementing that again and off the ground? Because I think that that would be a really good way to make sure that everybody understands. So. Yes, absolutely. That is one of my goals going into next year. Is really fostering a greater sense of community, and I think mentorship is a great part of that. You know, I think part of the reason that we have issues is that senators don't have deep personal relationships. So I think setting people up to say, hey, here's an experienced member of this organization, but also, hey, here's a person. I'd like to make, have new members make friends, make personal connections, so that way not only do they feel like empowered in their advocacy goals, but they also feel like a member of this USG community. You know, I think uh, a program where we pair up new senators would be great in doing that, and uh, it would really help us get them on the ground running, get that institutional knowledge, and also just a stronger sense of community and making Senate a place where people actually want to be. Yeah, so the mentorship 
program that was originally going to start. Um, I'm the one that kind of tried to get it off the ground. I sent out a bunch of emails, had people fill out a form, but fortunately due to things like say UConn and stuff like that, a bunch of our caucuses ended up getting canceled or kind of taken up. Um, thanks, John, for that. Um, <laughs> kidding, kidding. Um, but so that wasn't really able to get off the ground until recently and then it was like the semester is ending new people are coming in so definitely like one of my top priorities it's something that i want to work on over the summer i want to have that matching process over the summer um so that new senators can start working on that relationship over the summer even though a lot of stuff will be virtual um it's something that i want to start like immediately like if i'm elected tonight like i'm going to work on the form and get that out to people because it's something that i feel so passionate about um it is something that's so crucial to retention having that person that's there for you to lean on, but also like an accountability partner. I've been talking a lot um, to Aruma about that, but a lot of times we see people that just don't show up to Senate because there's not a ton of accountability there. You know, like obviously you're supposed to do that and it's in the rules and the bylaws, but it's not really like there's somebody actively checking you on that. Um, and so I want that mentor to also be that accountability person. Like, okay, hey, you didn't show up to committee this week. What happened? What's going on? and more of sort of like a check-in, um, but again, that proactive approach. Hey, you didn't show up, what's going on? How are you, how are you feeling? What are you going through, that sort of thing, um, I think is really vital in ensuring that retention. One second, guys, oh my gosh. Um, I think Angela was next for the question. Um, I want to give you both the opportunity, because then I'll ask Ali a question for you. I want to make sure that had a little, if you want to talk a little bit more about your background before you joined UConn, or maybe you want to elaborate more on your experiences that you in this role? Uh, sure, so I will talk, I guess, about my background. Um, so I guess I'll come out and say it. Um, so I was born with hemifacial microsomia. Um, it's a condition where half of the face is not fully developed, so that is uh, the right side for me. Um, so I have a lazy eye, one ear, um, a partially developed jaw. And so that's something that has kind of just forced me to be in the spotlight for my whole life. You know, I don't walk into a room without being looked at. So I, and I don't see people who look like me. So I understand what it's like to be from a group that isn't well represented, and I understand what it's like to feel uh, not fully empowered. You know, and I think that as a teacher, having that experience will be valuable to me in you know, understanding that, you know, I need to keep an eye out for those things with all the senators. Uh, I really appreciate that question. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have any other questions? I don't know. That was like a good thing. Oh. Um, <laughs> you want to talk about. Wait, can you repeat like, it? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I was asking, um, like, whether like that be leadership roles or your background in general, what you want to talk about and how that'll help you in the role. Um, you know, so I talked a little bit about like my involvement here. In high school, I was heavily involved in student government, my National Honor Society, like all those different ones, um, having positions and all of those. Um, I would say that my background is that I am kind of always around. <laughs> um, for those who have known me the past few years and been in the organization, I pretty much live in the office. I like to hang around there just in case somebody needs to have a conversation and something is going on, you know? And I think that I've made a lot of relationships that way, so I think that's an important part of my background. Um, I think something that I'm also very proud of, like in my background is being a nursing major, um, being very dedicated to that throughout my high school career and now throughout my college career. Um, and I've gotten to work with a lot of underrepresented um, communities through that, um, through programs here at the University of Connecticut um, and things like that. So just kind of having that background and being able to translate that into obviously student government. Obviously it's different working in healthcare and then working in student government. It's not really the same, um, but I think a lot of it translates how to talk to people of you know, different races, how to be culturally sensitive, how to understand those differences um, and really kind of take those into everything that I do. Every time that I speak, every time that I think of something, every time that I write it down, that experience, those um, kind of trainings are always prevalent in my mind um, and translate really well. Yeah, so everybody else set on the questions? Okay, so with that we're gonna move into discussion, which is the component during which anybody who would like to speak on behalf of a candidate or both candidates or the election in general, it's just a discussion. So you can use this time 
to speak on behalf of folks. You can also just use this time to make comments. Um, so the way that we're going to do this is we have, can we say it's one and a half for the speaking time? Two minutes. Two minutes cap. Uh, so we'll have Eric with the phone. Um, and then again, if you would like to speak on behalf of someone, raise your hand. All right, we've got these number of hands. So what we will do is, I think we can just... <laughs> I'm speaking for me and I'm speaking for someone who's not here. Okay, that sounds good. As long as you say who it is, so it's technically their time. Yeah, okay, so what we will do is, why don't we, we'll just literally go this way, moving from top down. So, for example, on this row, raise your hands again. Okay, um, I don't know everyone's names yet. Okay, also, I'll pay tell names. So, what is your name? Start at the top. Aya, nice to meet you, Aya. Welcome to SG, and you're the first one to meet you. Eric. Right here. And everyone else, can you can put, yeah, one second, but you can put your hands down and just go, how do you read them up? I don't want you to hold them all the time. Yeah, I have a file that's on it. I have on the phone. If you want to talk, as well, so, like, when it's my turn to speak. Yeah, yeah, so just when it's, so basically, you'll do your two minutes or whatever, and then for Anya's, you'll just say, I'm speaking on behalf of the senator. Like, Anya, technically, the senator is also, so she can speak now. Yeah, it's her time. Anya wants to know if it's okay if she just goes really quick. Oh, right now? Yeah, oh. she has to go. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Sorry. Tell her something. Girl, you got two minutes. Under your bed now. Okay, hi, can everybody hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay, hi guys. Um, this is Anya. I just wanted to speak on behalf of Ali in the solution, and I've just seen the way that he's grown over the past couple of years, and she's become a really amazing leader. I think she'd be a great speaker, um, and she's done a great job of deputy speaker, and she was staff. She's really organized and really friendly, so I think she'd be awesome for the position. Um, but at the same time, I think both Kyle and Ali have really unique attributes and would both do really well in the position. So yeah, I just wanted to see that, and wish you guys the best of luck.
last semester uh, when I started working as a part of the planning staff, and she just brings such a friendly and wonderful presence, like, uh, like welcome me so easily. And as an online senator, one of the main things that we go through when we go through recruitment is value-based recruitment, and that is how we refer. And the values that Allie showed me is just, she's such a powerful woman, and she's doing so great in this role. She has my vote, and I hope that she has your vote too. She's just so great, and she will do so, like, so much that will help not just who is in this room, but also outside of this room, and who we represent. I'm also speaking on behalf of Evan. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, you guys have been here long Um Okay. So I wanted to speak on behalf of Ali, and I wanted to congratulate Kyle as well for um, running. I feel like you're doing a good job. Um, so hi, best friends. Um, I'm going to give a little quick endorsement again for the Realist VP, Chief of Staff, and Nursing Senator. And so I just want to say that when I first began and I arrived on campus and my USG journey, I talked to two different members of USG, and um, those were Ahinkai and um, Ali. Ali became one of the first people that I called a messenger, and she consistently slaved with her work and communicated to senators. And was the first member of these candidates to reach out to me and ask for my feedback when it came to how to build a more comfortable environment in USG. So I want to thank you for your time and consideration for Ali. My bad. Um, as for Heaven's speech, um, I'm going to read what she sent me. She said, hi everyone, I apologize for my absence, but I hope everyone's having an amazing day as well, and I hope our new senators are having an amazing introduction to the Senate as well. Although I may not be currently there, I want to say that I believe Ali is one of the best candidates for Speaker of the Senate. Although, sorry, although it's my first year on campus and within the Senate, I truly do believe that um, Ali helped my success overall. There were so many times where I felt unsure of what to do and I knew no one within this community, but Allie was a person that always put a smile on her face and said hi to me. She remembered names and she's gonna be a great help to the Senate this year. And I think as Speaker of the Senate, she will help us um, overall flourish. Um, but I got to be first, sorry Kyle. Um, 
She had asked me to speak on her behalf about a week and a half ago, and I was hesitant in doing so because I've had limited interactions with her. And then I remembered she gave me a canker on Valentine's Day, and I was like, that's my best friend. Um, but again, the more I like, was thinking, I was just getting worried because I felt I couldn't do her justice. Um, Allie has done so much to establish trust in her abilities, not only for me, but for everyone in this room. I'm a huge actions over words person, and in the past months, I've been able to observe the level of dedication and love Allie pours into her roles with she. And whether it be sending us hundreds of messages and emails to let us know what's going on with she, raising thousands of money for USG's Husky Fund, or even passing out snacks. The passion Ali has for this organization's mission and its individuals really resonated with me. I don't know Ali, but I know she was the first person to add me to USG Slack. <laughs> I don't know Ali, but she still gave me a candy gram on Valentine's Day. I don't know Ali, but she was the only person to send her condolences after my dog passed. One thing I do know about Ali is that she cares. That was evident in her taking the time to reach out to me as an ex officio and ask me what I wanted to do as she could look like next year. And that was a breath of fresh air. For someone to listen to my concerns and commit to implementing changes in our community, it felt like the door was finally open. The degree, the degree to which Ali operates as a nursing student with so many commitments is so impressive. Please teach me how. <laughs> and I know that if she were elected as speaker, she would go above and beyond in fulfilling this role. Um, I am a new senator. I am um, the new MCD senator. Uh, I'm super excited to support um, Ali Domino and our candidacy for Speaker of Senate. Um, like I said, I'm new to USG, and I just met Ali a little over a week ago. Um, she was the first person to reach out to me and really answer all my questions and arranging the time and providing a really safe space to chat. Um, in the few interactions that I've had with her so far, she truly made me feel welcome and really help me understand my future role, and now current role as senator, and make sense of all the new info from uh, USG, because there was a lot. And quite honestly, before I talked to her, I was confused on when my turn to get started. So <laughs> when I met with her, um, she was incredibly kind, and I saw her immense passion for USG and her commitment to creating a welcoming environment for everyone inside and outside of USG. She was always there to fully, fully support me through this transition, and she's proven that she's a powerful communicator and will work really, really hard to develop personal relationships with each member of USG, and she's already begun doing that. She's clearly dedicated to not only getting people here, but supporting them while they're in USG and throughout her professional careers as a student and post-graduation. I have no doubt that she will be an outstanding leader as the next speaker of the Senate. Thank you. Is this who happened? Oh, no, it's so, fine. Uh, I'll be brief. <laughs> um, but Ali and Kyle are, are two wonderful people. Uh, they both reached out to me about two weeks ago uh, and, and told me, they asked me like how I was doing, what I liked about Senate, what I didn't like, what I wanted to change for next year. Uh, we had good conversations. Uh, Ali talked to me about the uh, importance of dissent, which he also talked about last caucus. I know some of the new members weren't there. Um, but I recently passed a bill uh, about a month ago, and that was the only bill probably the entire year, because I joined at the beginning of this academic year, that there were no votes on. All the other ones were mostly just abstentions. It'd be like eight abstentions and like 15 votes uh, for yes in the affirmative, but no, no votes. Um, and I really like that about Ali's uh, speakership and candidacy. And then Kyle uh, also reached out to me, uh, and I really like his ideas about recruitment and uh, getting more diverse uh, membership. Because uh, he, he sent me a text, he's like, we have 30 vacancies going into next year. Um, and I, I really believe in his ability to, to you know, fill a lot of those seats. Uh, so whoever wins, we're in good hands. Uh, there's no doubt about that, uh, but I just wanted to, to voice my appreciation. So, thanks, and good luck.
Um, I also want to reiterate what Eric said. I think both candidates are amazing in their own ways. I want to speak on behalf of Allie just because I've known her since she was a senator getting elected on to deputy speaker. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of our relationship. She's been one of the only people at USU that I've just consistently talked to. And I've watched her grow so much as a person. And I literally feel like I'm about to give like a wedding speech, like toast right now. Just like, I love you so much. And no, because I will be loving you. Um, she's not just a kind and caring person, but she's so committed in her role. And I truly have never seen someone so powerful in the way they speak, so eloquent. Like, you walk into a room and you can just turn head so immediately just because of the energy you bring. Um, I appreciate you and everything you do. I appreciate you for reaching out and telling me that I should run for parliamentarian. I appreciate you believing in me. And you're just one of those type of people that when I don't have faith in myself, I know I can rely on you and use you as a wall to just rest on. And you let me do it. And I appreciate you for everything you do. Um, but like I said, both of you are amazing candidates in your own way. And what Eric said, we're amazing. Like we're literally resting in good hands. Um, and yeah, uh, good luck to both of you. And I appreciate you both in so many different ways.
Okay, so uh, I'm going to have to uh, speak on behalf of that um, I came into this organization last year as a freshman, just as she had, was. And um, since then, I mean, she's been one of the kindest, most welcoming, uh, the most engaged people in this organization. Um, she has experience. Last year, she was deputy speaker, and into this year, the chief uh, of staff. I think, like she said, um, a big part of Senate is being a liaison between us and the Gulf Board. And I think she has all the experience being both a senator, a speaker, and on the Gulf Board. And so I think she's just proven her dedication, and I think she'll be uh, amazing to you. Hello, hello. Um, I'm here, um, well, I just want to say I'm sure we're going to move hands uh, next year, regardless of the result today. Uh, that we're going to have. But with all due respect to the two candidates that are running for Senate Speaker today, I, I would like to share a few words on what's truly on my mind. Unfortunately, today we lost the ally who truly invited what USG stands for. Will was a is a friend of mine, and I got to know him not only in USG, but also in an outside classroom. He and I will always talk about philosophy on past mistakes and what USG could improve on next year. He has a vision for what he could bring to USG, but now he's no longer here. And I hope everybody respects his decision today. Um, at the end, I just want to emphasize that this organization is made out of a diverse voices, types of, and a range of different personalities. So that means we'll have our differences. And if our differences ever lead to conflicts with amongst ourselves. I would say that's okay. But we need to remind ourselves that we share a common love for public service. We are on a common mission together. So we are one. Thus we should resolve our differences and issues amongst, amongst ourselves in a constructive way. Lastly, I just want to reiterate what Will always said to me in our conversations. Being USG isn't about holding positions of power, but about being a bridge for people who need help to find solutions. Thank you. I always hear about Allie, 
right? It's always, Allie was there, Allie did this, Allie did that, right? You always hear about Allie. Allie is the fundamental individual in this organization. She's the backbone, she's the driver, and she's the force that will get us to where we need to go in the next few years. But when I look at folks who, who run for positions, I value stability, I value experience. And Allie came out of the golden era of USD with the trifecta of Irene and Joe and her. You know, that was truly a force that, you, that could not be reckoned with. But in terms of experience, Allie knows this organization like the back of her hand. Being the former deputy speaker, being the current chief of staff and the vice president, Allie knows it all. And Allie is the one that can get us to where we need to go. She can help us get what we want. She's going to help us with our students, right? That's the general idea. But I really don't have anything else to say. I'm truly proud of where Allie is, right? Aruma, myself, and Allie, Brie from the past year. And look at where Allie's going, where she is now. And Adam, shout out Allie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Adam's been heated up, and you, you have been heating it up quite a bit. But um, that's all, y'all. That's all. I think he said it wasn't going to be called.
justices, so John is going to talk a little bit about this. I'll keep it really quick. Congratulations, by the way, to the new uh, speaker and new parliamentarian uh, and everyone who ran. Uh, so the, this is for nominating, uh, this is a nomination committee to nominate uh, the next justices of, uh, of our, our judicial branch of our organization. Um, and you can kind of see the names. We, um, we try to get kind of diverse group uh, you know, from different places. Um, obviously, Alan's position in there is now wrong. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll kind of keep it quick, keep, it, keep us moving. Um, and uh, so what's the question? Um, yes, no, it's the nomination of the questions. Yeah. questions. Yeah. Okay, do we have any questions for John? What does the nominations committee do? Uh, I think I said that. <laughs> 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 I, was, I was not. Uh, they choose the justices that will, you know, the justices. I can't really. Leo might be a better ex explainer of what the like the day to day is, but uh, they make up our judicial branch of the organization. Who then will eventually elect the chief justice um, as well. Um, Can I say a prayer to you? Yeah, go ahead. Leo. All right. One thing I will say is that given that we are nominating this nominations committee, we also need people to apply to be justices. So if you're interested in the possibility or want to know more about what it means to be justice, you can come see me after. In addition, there is a link that's been sent out in Slack. Uh, I can also send it to you if you come to me or we can send it out in an email. I'm sure you'll be hearing about it more soon. It's probably going to be on Instagram soon, stuff like that. But definitely apply. We're looking for more justices and we'd love to see you all Alrighty. Any other questions? <laughs> um, what do the justices do as like on the daily? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 so, um, that's the only one I I can answer the question. Actually, I got some so <laughs> um, Okay, so the judiciary. And here's my shameless plug for the judiciary. Oh, I just did it. Oh, no, I'm going to do it again. Apply for the judiciary for all the reasons he said. Um, but essentially, what the judiciary does on a day to day basis, we, uh, we're in committees to make sure that committees are running smoothly. Um, we, If any like thing was to go wrong in the organization, it, it would end up having to go to us. Um, and then we would decide on what the work, what uh, we should do. Um, a lot of our work has to do with funding and funding appeals. So, if a uh, club essentially doesn't get funding and they didn't get funding for the wrong reason, they come to us and then we can't grant them the funding. Um, and then, um, oh, the last thing is we run the elections. So mm -hmm. whenever elections come up, uh, we do that. And Mara has a lovely Hi, guys. Uh, I'm a justice. And I was just going to say, if you're pre-law or interested in law at all, this is something like you should look into because I am pre-law and I got to prosecute an election violation hearing that was like the top five moment of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely look into that. So thank you, Kamara. I'm glad that we have the top five moment of Kamara's life. Yes, mm -hmm. sure. yes but if I may just add, Jack very often likes to say that he has some crazy mega absolute power. <laughs> Jack is wrong and you should tell him that every time you see him. However, a majority of the judiciary together, so four justices, pretty much does. So if you would like to have a quarter of absolute mega power within this organization, apply to be a justice. Especially with elections. Stop trying to like seven years into the judiciary. All right, are there any other points of discussion? All right, so seeing none, I'm going to motion to pass this by unanimous consent. Are there any objections? Perfect. All right. So the nominations committee passes by unanimous consent. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, so basically, passing by unanimous consent is just a quicker way to pass things. Basically, means that everybody agrees. There's nobody that abstains or wants to vote no. If you do want to abstain or vote no, when I say my motion to pass is by unanimous consent, are there any objections? Can we just raise your hand, say that you have an objection. Then we would go into a hand vote, and then you could vote no or abstain. Uh, but in cases like very simple things like confirmations, that sort of thing, you would normally do that in a group setting uh, by unanimous consent, just because it makes it go a little bit quicker, um, so that we're not here for a while. Even if it just 
many things, no. But uh, if you disagree with something, it's totally okay to Yes, please. If you disagree with something, please object. We have a bunch of objections all the time. Um, moving faster Senate is not an exception for not, you know, having that space to disagree and stuff like that. So definitely welcome that. Um, one of the big things for next year. Definitely, definitely welcome that. So if you feel uncomfortable voting unanimously or having you vote yes, please reject. Um, but next we're gonna move into the confirmation of Ra Raquel Randolph as funding supervisor. And we're gonna group that with the next thing, confirmation of Stephanie Boythron um, as funding supervisor. So Peter's gonna speak um, for both of them right now. So both Raquel and Stephanie are currently in the role as funding supervisors. They're responsible for overseeing our distribution of funds to tier two groups here on campus and then can test other skills and their ability to do that well, they gave out close to $1.4 million this year alone. That's an insane number. I know we throw up big numbers all the time, but that's nuts, and that's amazing. Uh, and that's 100% due to their work and the stu students they have on their staff, that would be one of them. Uh, I don't see an issue as to why they shouldn't be continuing in that role. That's why they're here today. Can I just say they're super great at what they do as well. They're super awesome. They love clubs. They want to help everyone. Been saying that for the minutes. Um, <laughs> all right. Are there any questions about the confirmation? I, I, I have a, I have something good to say about them too. Because I said questions, so I don't know. Is I know. there a question? Just say, did you know? Okay. That? So are there any questions? All right. So seeing none, we're going to move into discussion. Points of discussion. Go ahead. Uh, so Stephanie and Raquel, I, I deal with them when them or their staff messes up, and let me tell you, they do not mess up a lot, um, so I'm very happy for that, so I think that we should definitely confirm both of them, um, because they do great work for the org, and they really don't mess up too much, so they're really, really good. Oh, oh. I'm kidding. Yeah. Love you. So All right. Are there any other points of discussion? Um, I also wanted to add that um, I got to know um, Raquel and Stephanie this semester, and they're the best. I mean, I'm telling you, they're so funny. I love them so much. I just want to add that. And Adam, my yeah. best friend. Yes. They're my bosses. I love them. <laughs> Should probably recuse <recognize. laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other points of discussion? Can I say no? You can. Uh -huh. Okay.
as a president, someone who's very involved with the advocacy, they look a lot to depend on the team to put out the content that they want. Whereas I can serve more of a support role to actually get the team to that point. Um, but that's really that's really the gist of it. Other than that, just some more like grammatical kind of mixes what already exists. Um, but I can answer any questions. Yeah, I only have one thing that I know in like the caucuses we talked a lot about how we can kind of respond and do better in the future and uh, one adding positions uh, allowing these senators to get involved in those things you know you need people to be able to coordinate that while having the million other projects go on um, so I completely support this I think Peter's going to do a great job with him under his office and obviously I'll still be involved like alright any questions Question. Question, did you attach the entire bylaws? Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I, did I, I did for transparency, so you could exactly Wait, see what I changed. Wait, is this the bylaws? <laughs> this is the bylaws. <laughs> this is the bylaws. <laughs> 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 All right, any other questions? I have a question. I have a question. So, okay, if you Josh, did you have a question? Josh. Josh, Josh did you have a question? Yes. Okay. What's going on with Parliamentary? Katrina. That's not currently. What? No, no, no. It is relevant. Wait, there are changes. Not even a Technically, it's all in the power. It's about all set. Okay. 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 All right. Um, yeah, the only change here with the parliamentarian is it originally said responsible for speaking to constituents, especially coming out of Save Yukon, we saw those areas where we need to have a consistent message as an organization, and making sure that everything is kind of flowing through our comms team, hopefully a more efficient comms team next year, um, we'll make sure that we have that consistent message. So just want to provide some clarification, um, rather than speaking directly to constituents, parliamentarian is that liaison for the communications team. I know we're doing a great work, just making sure our comms team knows what's going on in Senate. Um, but yeah, that's really the only change. Alrighty, any other questions? Alrighty, any points of discussion? Alrighty, so you'll see. Yes. Um, I'm not saying that the position should only be available to people that are liberal arts. However, I think that there should be a push for people who have better writing skills. Not that is not supposed to come off as like offensive, but liberal arts people. But quickly are slightly better at like critical analysis and figuring out, oh shit, this is this is what we need to be doing now and like this is how to write something out quickly. So maybe one position in comms, like trying to make sure if you get enough people signing up to like supply for jobs, you yeah. definitely like all right, like how do we approach this from different angles and just making sure that there's diversity not just within like physical or all the other diversity within the community. A lot of that goes into like the hiring process. So we worked really hard this year. We had like a whole uh, master list where we had like contacts with like digital media and design. We have people through that. Um, just kind of expanding that. Like we have people in the English department on that list. So um, it's kind of for the person to go out and individually find those areas, um, but also advertising it to the general students. Right. Any other points of discussion? I will say, I am a bit concerned with having the entire bylaws in here, especially since we just passed bylaw amendments that are not reflected in here. I, 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 would, I would defer to the judiciary, but you know, I feel like this may accidentally supersede some bylaw amendments we've made either tonight or in the past couple of weeks. Yes, Jeff? Um, I, I don't believe we made bylaws changes Today we did. Today we did, but not on past. <laughs> but um, so essentially, as long as John signs this in first, we won't have a problem because we have five days of bylaws coming into effect. John can theoretically veto bylaws for five bit business days, and then uh, then it comes into effect after. Can we just like delete the parts of the bylaws? Can I just can we just add language? Yeah, you can just like, yeah, we can just add. The, therefore, be it, therefore, be it resolved. Anything else passed wait, on wait, four Wait, 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 wait. Because I'm on page thirteen. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> the only changes in the bylaws are the changes. Wait, I like it yellow. Yeah. It says that. The shall be revised as oh, stated in as oh. changed in yellow. No, no, no. Yeah, there's, a, there's a footnote. It there actually is. It's actually there. Actually, all revisions. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, why is your title there twice? 
What do you mean? <laughs> We're not vice president elect uh, anymore. So he, like, he when he wrote it, he wrote it. You can take it off. Can I, uh, I, I move to amend to that. Oh my position. gosh. <laughs> and Allison's uh, position is correct. Who the f- Who is Allison? <laughs> First of all. Second of all. Wait, John's still an external person. Is that getting this Technically, yes. John is still the director. Oh my god. Oh my god. I resigned. <laughs> 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 well, congrats. You must be good at something. I'll resign. I move to amend Peter's name to Peter Vito Spinelli. <laughs> I second that. Alright, no more, no more, no more. Alright. We are going to try and pass this. By hand vote, all of those in favor raise your hands. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Alrighty, all those opposed, raise your hands. <laughs> Anyways, all those abstaining. Perfect, alrighty, so this passes. Um, and with that, we move into nothing else. So I'll leave this, leave it with this. I'm really excited to get started on this year. Um, really excited to just get started working with you guys. We will be having a Senate next week, 426. It's gonna be in Student Union 104. We'll be sending out an email about that. Um, but again, we're gonna be passing our preliminary budget for the year. Um, so come with questions, come with ideas. I love you all so much. Um, I'm gonna call the close at 10.09 p.m. Woo! <laughs>